Hey, Quad Bros, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good as always. Today's topic is grenades. Unless it has tons of different types of grenades, and it doesn't really give us a whole lot of information about the actual differences between them. So that's what we're going to be going over today. We're going to go over each type of grenade, what it does, what it's best at, and how you guys can be using each one most effectively. So let's jump into it with everyone's favorite grenade, the frag. The frag grenade is the simplest tool in your arsenal. It doesn't do anything flashy, but what it does do is kill enemies. And that's what it's best at. The frag grenade does 75 damage in a 10 meter radius and has a fuse of 5 seconds. It also has a pretty significant damage drop off towards the ends, but because it's a frag grenade, as its name implies, it has fragmentation. And thus, it does have significantly less damage drop off compared to its brother, the explosive pack. On top of that, the frag grenade is both smaller and lighter, meaning it can be thrown further and is easier to toss through like a window or a doorway or something like that. The frag grenade at the end of the day is just simple. You use it when you're attacking an objective or maybe pushing an enemy rally point or when you see any clump of enemy soldiers running around. If you've got time, make sure you guys are cooking your frag grenades, pulling the pin, waiting a couple seconds and then tossing it to ensure enemies aren't going to be able to avoid the grenade or throw it back at you. The frag grenade, like I mentioned, it's not flashy, it's not crazy, it's not burning enemies, it's not, you know, zoning enemies off of an objective, it just kills people. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what you want it to do, and it does it really effectively. If there's one grenade that you guys should be using the majority of the time, I would say it's probably the frag grenade. So if you're not sure, pick these up, they're always going to be useful in some capacity. Next up, we have the frag grenade's fragile friend, the impact grenade. Impact grenades have just 25 damage in an 8 meter radius, making them very limited in damage. However, what they lack in area of effect, they more than make up for in speed. Impact grenades explode on impact with any surface, including, and especially, soft, fleshy soldier bodies. This makes them great for emergencies and effective in assault squads where you may not have the time to properly cook a frag grenade. Impact grenades are also much better at close quarters fighting, since you'll have more opportunities to impact them against walls, furniture, floors, ceilings, or anything else that you can find. Like I just mentioned, impact grenades work best in situations where you aren't able to fully cook a frag grenade. Like whenever you're pushing across dangerous ground and you don't have the opportunity to pull out your grenade, wait 3 seconds, and then toss it. Or maybe you're pushing into a larger building, and you're not 100% sure where the enemies might be. One potential strategy when using them is to push into a building with the grenade out and throw it at a group of AI, and then use your submachine gun to finish off anyone left standing. Overall, impact grenades are best suited for heavy assault squads that are utilizing close quarters weapons like SMGs, shotguns, or things like that, while slower squads such as machine gunners or things like that are going to be better suited to using a different type of grenade. Be really careful when using impact grenades, especially whenever you're going up against fortified areas because the small radius and the limited damage means that any kind of fortifications uh, like sandbags or the like are going to vastly limit the effectiveness of your impact grenades. Now on to the explosive pack, which has quite the storied history in Enlisted. Once upon a time, the explosive pack was really the only grenade worth using, but since then it has had its power reduced substantially. Now the explosive pack exists as the premier anti-tank grenade, as it has a whopping 250 damage limited to just a 2.5 meter radius. On top of that, it has an additional 10 meter radius where it does 60 max damage, but with a very heavy damage fall off towards the edges. This means that while the explosive pack does have the highest area of effect, its damage is very low on the outer edges since it lacks fragmentation. The explosive pack is best used as an anti-tank weapon to give your soldiers a fighting chance against armored vehicles, or to ambush them for that matter. When using explosive packs, make sure to always cook them as much as possible since this will ideally prevent enemy vehicles from maneuvering away from it, and cooking the explosive pack also limits enemy infantry ability to retreat to the outer edges of the explosion pack's radius where they'll take very, very small amounts of damage. Overall, the explosive pack is a far cry from its dominance in early enlisted, but it still offers a very powerful anti-tank tool for any soldier, and I'd recommend you guys are carrying at least one or two explosive packs in any squad. Preferably on a soldier who doesn't already have an anti-tank weapon like a bazooka, panzerfaust, or PTRS or something like that. Now to the more fiery grenades, starting with the Molotov Cocktail. 
When thrown, a Molotov will explode on impact in about a 4 meter radius, lighting anyone within that 4 meters on fire instantly. It also leaves a patch of fire for about 30 seconds, which will heavily obscure vision as well as prevent anyone from attacking through it. Now, in terms of killing, Molotovs are one of the weakest grenades since they rely on a direct hit in a small radius to actually light enemies on fire, and it will still take 5 or more seconds for the fire to kill a full health soldier since the damage per second is just 2. That being said, the Molotov's best use comes from its ability to completely lock down avenues of attack and completely stall out an enemy attack or counterattack. Use Molotovs on doorways, windows that you expect enemies to attack you from to force them into a bad engagement. When you're defending, throw down Molotovs to funnel your enemies into entrenched positions and machine guns and kill zones. When you're attacking, use your Molotovs once you've secured an objective to prevent your enemies from reinforcing, allowing you to gain capture progress without actually having to take any fights. Molotovs are one of the most underrated pieces of equipment in all of Enlisted, and a smart player with a handful of Molotovs and an engineer squad can massively sway the outcome of an entire match. For our final lethal grenade, we have the White Phosphorus Grenade. The White Phosphorus Grenades will, similarly to Molotovs, light any enemy within a 4 meter radius on fire when it explodes with a timer of 5 seconds. Also similarly to the Molotov, it denies entry to an area by leaving behind a cloud of gas that deals just 1.75 damage for 8 seconds. White Phosphorus is kind of the midpoint between the area denial of a Molotov and the concealment of the smoke grenade, but it really doesn't do either of the two very well. After a long series of nerfs to the White Phosphorus grenades, they're really just one of the least useful grenades in Enlisted, at least at the time of this video. And they just don't really have anything that they particularly excel at. If you want to kill enemies, a frag grenade is going to do that job better. If you want to deny an area, a molotov is going to do that better. If you want to conceal yourself, smoke grenade. And if you want to destroy a vehicle, then you're going to want to be using an explosive pack. There's just simply no role that the white phosphorus grenade does. And because of that, I would recommend against bringing any Willy Pete in general. And instead, bring a Molotov if you want area denial, or a smoke grenade if you're looking for concealment. The white phosphorus grenade as it stands, it's just not really worth the investment. And that brings us to our final grenade for the video. The lowly, humble smoke grenade. Smoke grenades are a support player's dream, and they can be used very effectively to provide concealment for your team. Now I'm going to reiterate what I just said. Smoke grenades provide concealment, not cover. Smoke will not stop a tank from shooting through, but it will make it harder for them to hit you. Just keep that in mind for whenever you throw a smoke grenade and then try to charge through it into an enemy machine gun. Smoke lasts for about 30 seconds and in a fairly large radius. One important tip is to throw smoke onto enemies, not in between yourself and the enemies. You don't want to limit yourself and your team from shooting back at the enemies, and you certainly don't want to charge out of smoke and into direct open view of the entire enemy team. Keep in mind, many enemy tanks and your tanks can also utilize smoke rounds, as well as radio operators calling in smoke barrages. So I don't really recommend bringing entire squads with smoke grenades, and instead, if you're looking for a mass smoke bombardment, utilize one of those tools instead. What you should do, and can do, is to bring a couple soldiers with smoke grenades in your assault squads, to allow yourself the room to maneuver forward and throw more lethal grenades onto an objective to secure it and wipe enemies off of it. And that brings us to the end of this video. There's always more tips and tricks to learn, so guys, please leave a comment down below with your best tip or trick for utilizing grenades in Enlisted so we can all have some more tips and tricks and get better at the game. While you're there, leave a like and subscribe because it does help me out a ton and I really do appreciate it. And finally, if you're new to the channel or to Enlisted in general, make sure to check out my other tips and tricks videos for the various parts of Enlisted that aren't explained very well like grenades. But without anything else, thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.